Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. This is going to be uh, a quick intro to destructuring, and then we'll also talk about uh, where destructuring might be useful, uh, especially in the scenario of like you're in Node.js, you have a module that exports multiple things and you want to import multiple things into another file, but we'll get there. Let's just first start with like, um, what is uh, basic destructuring? So let's say I have myself an object called person, and in that person, I have a name, which is CJ, just like that, because that's me. So this object represents me. <laughs> um, and let's say I want a variable that has the name of that person inside of it. So I, I could do this. I could say name equals person.name. Um, my linter is yelling at me because it, it says prefer destructuring. But let's, uh, let's see what happens here. So I'm going to use Quaka, which is a tool that will run my code inside the editor. But you can see... We've done it, right? We've extracted that name property into a variable called name. And that's great. This is like the old way of doing it. Um, and destructuring is syntactic sugar that makes it a little bit nicer to do something like this. And wh where it um, is really nice is when you have multiple properties. So you could have something like, let's say I have a dog and that dog has a name, which is Panzer. Um, and let's say I have a snack and that snack is a cashew uh, butter cup and I have a drink, and that drink is water. Um, so now our object has a bunch of properties, and let's say I wanted more variables, I could say something like uh, snack equals person dot snack. Did I spell drink wrong? No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, and then we could log the snack. Oh, good job. Good job, NovaScript. <laughs> um, not the snake, the snack. And that should be cashew buttercup, great. Uh, and we could do this all day, right? We could create variables that access individual properties. Uh, now, where destructuring is useful is instead of having to access each individual property and then put it into a variable, you can do it all in one go. So uh, this is the old way. And then in ES2015, destructuring was introduced. So um, what you do is you put uh, an object on the left-hand side, or you put curly braces on the left-hand side of the equal sign. It's a little weird, but we'll do this. We'll say const curly braces equals person. All right. This currently is invalid syntax. Uh, and now what I do is inside of these curly braces, I specify all of the properties that I want to pull out and put into a variable. So I can just do name and snack. Done. So basically what I've done here is, so right-hand side is an object or something with properties on it. The left-hand side is curly, brace, curly braces, and I specify the name of each of the properties that are inside of the object that I want to put into um, variables and now we have variables name and snack which is great and so this is basic destructuring instead of having to individually uh access a property put it in a variable we can kind of do it all in one go just like this um and you can do a lot more interesting things so you can do things like a default assignment so i can say like if name is not specified then name should be cj um and so actually let's let's show you i'll show you what happens if there was that property was not on there so right now we're destructuring name and snack uh from that oh you're right let it be known, this is object destructuring. I'll show array destructuring really quick, but let's say I don't have a name property. Now when I destructured it, it's undefined, but I can combine that with um, default uh, values and say, if there is no name in there, then set name to be that. And now I get CJ. So it, this is really useful if you're like dealing with results from an API and, and potentially a value is, doesn't exist in the response. You can do things like default uh, assignment. Um, you can also rename the variables. So if we put uh, name back in there, now we're making it, uh, we're extracting name, right? Um, and let's say I actually want to rename this variable. So inside of the object, it's called name. So I do have to say name here, but let's say I want to put it in a variable called my name. I can just do name colon my name. And now that creates a variable called my name. And you can see the error I get is name is not, not defined because I no longer have a variable called name. I can now use the variable my name like that. Um, so there's renaming, there's default assignment. The other thing is like nested destructuring. So let's go deeper. Uh, how do you change the name and the default? Oh, I've never, oh, they are like, is that a trick question? I think, can you do this? My name equals what? Hey, that's some weird syntax. <laughs> but basically this says there is a property in the object called name extract it into a variable called my name, and if it does not have a value, assign it to the, the, the value wat. Good, 
call, Alka. <laughs> Inception destructuring. <laughs> But we're just going to go back to this. Okay. Uh, what I'm going to show you next is like nested destructuring. So you'll notice that there also is a dog with the name Panzer. Now, of course, uh, I could extract out dog, right? Yeah, and this is what we're going to show you right now. How do you get that dog name? So dog, and that gives me the the object itself. And it, it, it is, it's a reference to that same object. I can get that. Now, let's say I want the dog name. We can go deeper. So if the property you're destructuring is an object, you do curly braces, and then you can specify the properties you want to extract from that uh, nested object. So let's say I do want to extract the name. Now, if I do this, we now technically have an error because we're trying to define two different variables with the name name. So this, in this scenario, I absolutely have to rename one of them. I could call this one uh, my name. And you see that name um, becomes uh, Panzer. Um, or I could say name is dog name. And then you'll notice that we no longer are destructuring dog. I think like, can I do this? Like extract dog, crazy. <laughs> I've never actually done this. I don't know uh, why you would do it, but um, check it. So if I want to extract the object into a variable called dog, I'll specify it. And then if I want to extract properties inside of that object, um, I, can do, I can specify it uh, below that. I literally know, did not know that you could do this. That's pretty cool, because, but as you can see down here, is we have a variable called uh, dog. Um, so I've never done that either, but I do know when I should have done that. I <laughs> didn't know I could. So we have a variable called dog, which is the object, and then we have a variable called dog name, which is just the dog name itself. And this, this can go infinitely deep. So you can destructure nested nested properties. You can have default names inside nested nested properties. Um, you can have uh, default or uh, default, as yeah, default assignment. You can rename them. Um, it goes all the way down. What if you change it? Uh, what do you mean? Oh, oh okay, so uh, that gets into the idea of reference values versus primitive values. So these values, name and snack, are primitives. So if I change them, so right now, if I log person, you should see that it, it has the name CJ and all that. If I change the variable name, actually I can't because it's a const variable, but let's say we made these let. <laughs> let's make these changeable variables. So if I said name equals wat, if we log the name, now, we're going to get wet, right? But if I log the person, what will it be and why? First non-sub in the chat to tell me will get gifted a sub. So if I, if I log the person right now, what, is, what will the value of name be on the person and why? It will be CJ, but why? Oh, that's true, Andrew. We can even talk about that because you can do a default assignment of an object with the default values inside of it. Because if you're changing the var, not the struct itself. Yeah, or not the object itself. It's not a reference. Yeah, yeah. I'll give to you a sub, Christinas. <laughs> um, and so, uh, yeah. So, like, because I destructured name, it's a primitive value. It's just a, it's, it's a copy of the string. But uh, if we look at the original person they still have the name CJ. And, and that, that, this just has to do with like uh, primitive versus reference types. Uh, not really anything to do with destructuring. But yeah, good call. Yeah, it was a copy, copy of the value. Um, okay, and then the, the other thing I'll show you is like what um, uh, Andrew talked about is we could do a default assignment of the dog. So let's say we didn't have a dog property. Now you see that we get an error here because I'm, I'm trying to destructure dog, but... Um, dog is not defined on the original object. Uh, but what I can do is I can say uh, dog has a default value of like name um, panzer uh, like that. Cool. Um, oh, no, no, no. Wait. Can I do that? No, it, it, this gets weird because now I'm, I, I, I want to do this basically. <laughs> I could do this. I could say dog uh, equals an object where the name is uh, Panzer. Like this. So I am now, if dog is not defined on the original object, set it to be this object with this property name. Um, I'd never done that before, so I, would, I don't know how you would do a default assignment and destructure the dog itself. Things get weird. But yeah, this is a default assignment of an object. Cool. Um... Let's put that dog back. All right, so that's destructuring. Um, yeah, because it's a value type, exactly. Do, 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 do. 
<laughs> yeah, Alk is going way deep, way deep. <laughs> this is a mess. I mean, at the end of the day, it is what's known as syntactic sugar, right? Because you can write your code this way, but it's a little bit nicer to do this. Save some lines of code. I don't know. Okay, so this is object destructuring. The other thing I'll show you really quick is array destructuring. So if I have an array of uh, values, and that just has one, two, and three, um, I can do this. I can say uh, first equals values. And uh, what will first have inside of it? Anyone want to take a guess? Anybody? Anybody? There are two flies. Oh, look at him. He landed on my finger. I don't know if you can see him. <laughs> I literally just put my hand out and he landed on my finger. Okay, go over there. Go over there. <laughs> one, one, exactly. Ah! <laughs> Um, yeah, so uh, it is It is just uh, the value 1. So the way array destructuring works is it's very similar, but instead of curly braces, you use square brackets. Um, and we have uh, square brackets, and we're saying the first value in the array should be assigned to this variable called first. You can also have um, second and third, and of course these are all going to have 1, 2, and 3. And just like object destructuring, I mean, technically you, you could rename them. You could say this is like wat, who, and fly, and now we have these three variables, wat, who, and fly, which are equal to the, the first three values in the array. Um, yeah. Uh, this extension is called quaka.js. Cool, so you can do array destructuring. Uh, one thing you might also do is, let's say I want a variable that has the third value in the array inside of it, but I don't want the first two, you can just leave those blank. So if you do uh, comma, comma, fly, uh, that skips the first two and then puts the third value inside of the variable called fly. And so this is useful if uh, you have an array with multiple things and you know that you only want to extract um, certain ones at certain indices. It is similar to multiple assignment, yeah, because basically you're taking the values from an array and putting them into multiple variables. <laughs> you're, you're extracting the, the prototype with the default constructor? Hey, hey, what about squashing? So uh, this is, yeah, the, the rest or the spread operator. Um, you wouldn't really use that here. Yeah, yeah, so it has the, that's not useful here, but you, JavaScript does have it. Useful, but weird looking, yeah. So here's the other thing. So this, this okay, so check it. So that, that's one way to do it, um, but I'll show you another way, which I kind of prefer, but here's the thing. In JavaScript, everything is an object, right? So if everything is an object, then how could I use object destructuring to get the value three and put it into a variable called fly? The first non-sub to tell me will get gifted a sub. So instead of array destructuring, I want to use object destructuring to take this value and put it into a variable called fly. Oh, I know this. To fly, yeah, you got a strider. So um, the an, an array is just kind of like an object that has keys. The key is two, and then I want to rename it to fly. Look at that. We've used object destructuring on an array. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So the, the in the, the it's because the keys in this array are actually the indices, right? Because you could say zero is wat, and one is who. And now we've taken the indices in the array and put them into those variables. Weird, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I actually would prefer this because then you don't have the weird, like, empty floating commas. That's it. All right, everyone. I think that's all there is to say about destructuring. Um, one thing I'll show you real quick as, like, a practical example of this is let's say we have a file called um, MathUtils. And inside of this, I have a function called add that takes in A and B. And that won't pass my code review. <laughs> This just returns a plus b, uh, and then let's say I have another function called uh, multiply. And I can return a plus b, um, and I want to make these two functions available to the outside world. So I'm in Node.js, uh, and I'm going to use a common JS, which is um, use module.exports and require. And thank you, Bjolni, for the Twitch Prime sub. Um, so I'm going to export an object that has an add property and a multiply property on it. Um, and so this module exports an object. I can import that object into another file and then use those functions. Um, so let's do that here. 
Um, I actually think Quack is going to break if I do this, but I could put it into an object called Matthew Tills. Like that. Yeah. So only the Pro Edition allows us to import files, so that's fine. <laughs> but did I do multiply with a plus sign? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It should be a multiplication sign. But regardless, I have functions here. I've exported them as an object, and now I want to use those uh, elsewhere. Now, of course, I could just import the entire object. Um, and then, uh, and let me let me kill Quaka really quick. So I could do MatthewTills.add or MatthewTills.multiply. Uh, one and two. Or multiply. Exactly. Right. But now that you know how destructuring works, we basically can put these into a non-namespaced function. So I can just say uh, add and multiply. And now I directly have access to those functions, and I don't need to uh, namespace them on uh, MatthewTills. So that's like a practical example. Um, I mentioned we're in CommonJS. You could do a very similar thing in uh, ES 2015. It's a little bit different because you basically export each individual function and then you would import um, them, but it uses a similar syntax in that you're destructuring those exported uh, named exports. The multiply function is wrong. I think we fixed it. What's up, Bob? <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Uh, anything else I should talk about in terms of um, array destructuring, object destructuring? This was fun. We talked a lot about, about a lot of stuff. Yeah, I think I, I did see a message, though, like, why not values at two? You're right. I mean, that, that, that's probably even simpler than either of these two things, is we could say um, cons fly uh, equals values at two. And in this scenario, it's probably more useful to do that. But uh, <laughs> basically, you could use destructuring, or you could just assign them to variables. All right, I don't see any other suggestions, so I think... Yeah, but if you do it with like this, you're not flexing your destructuring knowledge. <laughs> Can you destructure the file contents without passing every argument? It, it, you can't. That's the, that's the tricky part. And I, and I see what you're saying is like, let's say you have a hundred functions and you want to import all of them in the in the namespace itself. You, you can't do that. You have to actually name each individual one. Um, yeah, the spread operator with destructuring. That's too advanced. I think we're gonna end it there. This video is already like ten minutes long. <laughs> Um, but yeah, unfortunately in JavaScript, you cannot do that. So you would have to literally write out every single one or you would put them behind a namespace. Yeah, there's no wildcard destructuring now, unfortunately, because that would be similar to like import star in some of some more, some of the more like uh, compiled languages, but we don't really have that in, in JavaScript. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. You can destructure with function parameters, right? So right now I'm just showing destructuring at the top level, but if you had a function, um, called like say hello that takes in a person and then this just logs no, not say hell say hello say hello <laughs> this logs a uh, person dot name hello person dot name um, of course we could write this with destructuring so if we instead of writing it this way we could say um, the argument to this function or the parameter to this function is an object so let's destructure it and grab the name property and then we can just do this uh, this is extremely common in uh, in react where you have uh, components that accept props and you can destructure those props so yeah you can destructure anywhere uh, right now it's complaining because name is uh, uh, defined above but yeah <laughs> I think that's about it thanks everyone for watching everyone say bye YouTube bye YouTube Content. <laughs> Bye.